Evidential homeopathy is the study of the physical characteristics of homeopathic remedies or high dilutes and their action on non-human subjects. Now, in part four, I introduced a medical doctor by the name of William E. Boyd, MD, who conducted one of the most comprehensive studies in evidential homeopathy, specifically biochemistry. What Boyd did was very interesting. He performed what might be considered a miracle. And he left the recipe in case somebody else wants to try to bake the same cake. You know what I mean? Back in the 30s, <clears throat> there was a Russian scientist named Person, or Person, at the Biochemical Institute of Leningrad, who claimed that homeopathic mercuric chloride could affect the enzymatic process. He was using as his measure the estimated rate of hydrolysis on starch, the hydrolysis of starch on diastase. Well, a Scottish medical doctor by the name of Boyd took an interest in the technique that person was developing and decided that it justified further investigation under more carefully controlled conditions. Well, Boyd had a medical trust at his dis disposal, so he had the funds to mount a serious investigation. And it's been suggested that to replicate what he did would now be cost prohibitive. And what's more, Boyd wrote in his reports with uh, the specific intent of providing subsequent investigators the means by which to replicate his work. Uh, Boyd commissioned two Barbour res research scholars in biochemistry to design the study, Dr. Pettigrew and Dr. Hurd at Glasgow University. And he later had it refined with the help of Professor Sir Gowland Hopkins. They hired a lab technician who they took a year a, y a whole year to train, to just, just, to tra just to run these tests. And after a year of testing to check the results, they replaced this lab technician with a second one to replicate the results of the first, taking another year to train her. These guys were being exhaustive about this. And these are medical, this is a medical doctor who's assembling a team of people around this topic, the best people that he can find to investigate it. Why? Because the results are unbelievable. Extraordinary results take extraordinary means to achieve. They had to cover all the bases. So Boyd even hired a uh, statistician by the name of P. Giles to analyze the results, the microdoses, as Dr. Boyd calls them, were of mercuric chloride and were made in the standard homeopathic method of preparation. The final dilutions were diluted in the order of one part mercuric chloride to 10 to the 61st power parts of water. Or in homeopathic parlance, that would be about a 32C, where there can be theoretically, absolutely, no remaining elements of the mercuric molecular mercuric chloride in the solution. Then we should change that to the normal molecular mercuric chloride in the, solu in the solution, or ortho orthomolecular. So they diluted out all of the molecular mercury, theoretically leaving behind only energetic traces of the mercury. Common physics would predict that there here is uh, no such thing as energetic mercury. And the proof of it would be that the homeopathic solution would have no more effect on the enzymes than would the plain water solution. Now, are you with me so far? They used what was called a specker, amongst other things, uh, a specker absorptiometer to colometrically compare the differences 
of the rate of hydrolysis between the control solutions in the flats containing the starch, the diastase, and the distilled water, and the test solutions in flasks of the starch diastase, uh, distilled water, and the homeopathic mercuric chloride. Now again, conventional physics would predict that there would be no difference whatsoever, no difference what, whatsoever between the two, and that both would have the same action on the enzymes, right? Okay. Well, they made 500 comparisons, 500 between the control solutions and the homeopathic solutions, okay? 500. And what do you think they found? They discovered that the homeopathic mercuric chloride solutions stimulated the hydrolysis of the enzymes. The distribution control methods and accessory control procedures were considered, analyzed, and inspected so as to exclude any extraneous contaminants that might have gotten into the solutions due to chance. But the only difference between control and test flasks was the addition of the homeopathic mercuric chloride, the distilled water being common to both the control and test solutions. Okay? And so, contrary to belief, to the astonishment of skeptics, it was concluded that an unidentified factor derived from the mercuric chloride was present in the solutions of the homeopathically prepared mercuric chloride by, uh, that was prepared by serial dilutions with uh, succussion, which is the mechanical shock it goes into. And that this mysterious factor affected the distilled water and that this change was transferable to subsequent stages of dilution and that this mysterious factor was the source of the activity in the homeopathic mercuric chloride solutions. And that these solutions actually ex did indeed accelerate the race rate of hydrolysis. They speeded up the enzyme activity. Well, this is profound. Well, maybe the lab technician was fudging the results. So they conducted a series of trials that were blinded blinded to prevent the lab technician from either consciously or unconsciously skewing the results and once again when they analyzed them when they analyzed the results they were the same the homeopathic mercury was doing something to the enzymes these tests were so thorough the experiments the experiment is so skeptical that they took the glassware and ground it down to dust and analyze that for any trace residue of the mercuric chloride. I think they used a, a Geiger counter and then they used a, a, a scintillator because it was, more, it, was, it was more sensitive than the Geiger counter. And they, uh, you know, they, they were concerned that, they might, that some trace element might affect the results and they found nothing, nothing other than the homeopathic process that could account for what they saw. Now, there are numerous other studies in evidential homeopathy, studies that reveal the action of homeopathic remedies. And in the same way, leave scientists scratching their heads and homeopaths reassured that the medicine they administer to their patients is not a mere placebo, but substance, a substance that can have powerful, powerful, effects, effects. What's this you say? Skeptics say homeopathic remedies are placebos made of nothing but plain water and ritual. How then can a placebo have any effect on plants, animals, or enzymes? Homeopathic remedies claim to have uh, some voodoo mechanism that is beyond matter. So how can this be? So any scientist who reports on such things, no matter what his credentials are, must be lying, stupid, or insane. Didn't they say the same thing about Galileo?